following the outbreak of a flesh-eating virus. Let's not call it a flesh-eating virus. Let's rather call it a hemorrhagic virus known as Ebola. The first known case in that country of the hemorrhagic fever was spotted late last month. The virus is also said to have spread to Liberia, where five patients have died of the fever. Well, Professor Lucille Bloomberg from the National Institute for Communicable Diseases is in studio with us to tell us more about this virus. Thank you so much for being with us and welcome to Morning Live. Um, we call it a hemorrhagic virus. Let's just talk a little bit more about it because I think so many people are under the impression that Ebola is not, it's not existing anymore, that it has been... Uh, you know, almost eradicated, but it really hasn't. No, it up. no, and there have been a number of outbreaks um, in the last 30 years. Last one, last ones were in Uganda and in, in uh, DRC uh, in 2012. So it, it so it, it, it does happen. I mean, it, it happens, does and up. we don't know when and why, but we do have outbreaks. Yeah. So we're talking about Liberia. We're talking about Guinea. What about South Africa? Are we at risk at all? So we don't have Ebola in this country. Uh, but we are at small risk of introduction uh, through people who might seek care here who might have been infected in the, in the outbreak area. Mm. And in 1995, in fact, we did have a doctor who was working in an outbreak in, uh, of Ebola in Gabon who sought medical care in South Africa, wasn't uh, recognized, and a healthcare worker was infected uh, through looking after the patient and being exposed to, to blood and she subsequently died. Sure, yeah, so it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dreaded disease, yes. that, that much we do. Let's talk about the symptoms, what, what happens if you do contract Ebola? So it's one of the hemorrhagic fever viruses uh, unique to Africa. Um, it starts really quite suddenly and not very specifically with fever and progresses to uh, involve all the organs and many of the patients will bleed and up to 90% will die. So. And it obviously spreads very fast, very contagious? It's, um, it's not spread easily, not through casual contact, and you're really required to have direct contact with the person's uh, blood or body tissues or body fluids. So healthcare workers who are not protected through gloves or protective clothing yeah. may be exposed, and then close family members who are caring for patients or helping to prepare the bodies for burial. Uh, would be most at risk. Yeah. So you talk about 90% of those that do contract yeah. it die. So, so in other words, what you're saying that there, there is no cure for this virus. There, there is no specific treatment. And many of these no patients, treatment either. there is no treatment. There is no specific drug. And I think in many of these remote areas, um, care would be very limited. Yeah, yeah. Um, I in terms of measures that are being observed to prevent it from spreading, say to South Africa, like the case we did have in 1995, w what do we do? do are, are there measures that are put in place now? Well, I think the risk to South Africa, to, uh, of introduction to South Africa would be very low. It's important that uh, healthcare workers are aware and think about this in any patients who might come for care here from that area. Mm. I have to say that uh, there are other diseases that are much more common, malaria, for example, yes, of course. and anybody who presents with fever from, from that region that's a much more likely diagnosis. But I think uh, an awareness is important. Yeah, an awareness is important, obviously, about this. How, it, quite interesting, I'm, I'm, I'm reading a couple of articles and they're saying that there, there, there is a chance that these viruses are suspected to survive in certain animal populations. Yeah. Is this true? Is this a fact for well, Ebola as well? We don't know everything about Ebola. Uh, it probably survives in bats in, in forest areas. Bats may infect humans directly. We don't know exactly how. But they may also affect other animals there, chimpanzees, gorillas, um, forest-dwelling antelopes. And then people catch these animals, handle them, and are exposed to the infected blood of these uh, animals. Yeah, quite interesting. The reality is, is that a lot of South Africans do travel to Guinea. A lot of them do travel to Liberia and other African countries. What precautions should you take if you are traveling to these parts of well, the I world? I think, you know, these outbreaks are, are mostly in quite remote areas. So I think tourism is very limited. We do have people working there. Um, I think the, the risk to travelers would be extremely low. You it's not through casual contact. Yeah. And they're unlikely to be exposed to blood of patients. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's about protecting against malaria and uh, making sure you have your yellow fever shot. So I think their risks are very low um, to, to negligible. There are no travel restrictions uh, to any of those areas. All right. Thank you very right. much for talking to us, uh, shedding some light on the Ebola virus that uh, at this point in time has uh, claimed at least 59 people in Guinea following the outbreak of this, uh, of this hemorrhagic virus. Uh, Professor Lucille Bloomberg telling us all about this, uh, this virus. Thank you again for joining us.
All right, the time now is 23 minutes, almost 24 minutes past six.